Dan Oman here with the DRF Race of the Day for Monday, June the 3rd. It's race number three at Asinaboya Downs. Let's throw up the field for the Bobby Q Overnight. It's one of two stakes races at the Downs on Monday. And race number three is the kickoff leg of the 20 cent ASD jackpot pick five. The pool going into tonight's pick five wager, $32,000. Race number four at the Downs is the first leg of the $1 pick four. Remember, there is a $50,000 guaranteed pool in the pick four wager on Monday night at Asinaboya Downs. Race number three features the return of the five. Can you hear me running? He was an excellent two-year-old last year, sweeping through all four of his starts in very easy fashion, winning three stakes races. He'll have to deal with a layoff, but it just looks like he's very well spotted returning in this five-eighths of a mile dash. We'll throw up our Timeform U.S. pace projector for this race. Timeform U.S. believes the race will be run at a reasonable rate, perhaps favoring front runners. The two, the three, and the four have all shown some speed in the past. But the good news about the five, can you hear me running, is that this is a horse that has shown tactical speed and versatility. He's gone to the lead when he has to. He can sit just off the lead. And I think he'll be close if the pace is moderate. We'll start things off with the number one thirsty baby, who's a very interesting stranger, having made all of his pre previous starts on the synthetic surface at Golden Gate Fields in Northern California. He has a dirt pedigree. His dam was a multiple stakes winner at Delta Downs on the dirt and earned a 95 buyer speed figure over that surface. Claimed out of his most recent start, he makes his Downs and dirt debut as a new gelding, and he ran into some decent competition last time out at Golden Gate. The winner of that race came right back to win again with a 72 buyer speed figure and a 12,500 claimer. Thirsty Baby is a horse that does doesn't show much early speed, so perhaps the way this race will be run at this short distance could work against him. He may have a lot to do turning into the stretch, but if you're looking for an alternative to the favorite returning off of a long layoff, here's a stranger to consider. The two is Lieutenant Norm, who scored last time out in a race we're going to show you right now on May the 21st. This was his first start at the Downs after competing at Sunland Park and Turf Paradise, and he showed good tactical speed to win. He's getting away from this field at the end, here into respect respectable 63 buyer speed figure, and the fourth place finisher came back to graduate at Lethbridge on Sunday afternoon. Lieutenant Noor might have found a home here at the Downs, and he does have the tactical speed to lead or rate in a race lacking much pace. The three is Keep on crew, keep Calm and Cruise On, who finished second to Lieutenant Norm last time out. But Keep Calm and Cruise On was making his career debut, and he was giving away a ton of experience to Lieutenant Norm that day. He also didn't break the best, and then was forced to rush up to contest the pace. He was the horse that had the lead in the stretch that Lieutenant Norm ran down in the video we just showed. I think he'll break better this time around. And if he does, I won't be surprised if he's the one to make the running, and should be very prominent when the field turns into the stretch. Magnolia Speed is the number four, and this is an honest campaigner. A lot of second place finish is on his record, however, like his most last, uh, like his most recent start, a second place finish in an allowance race at the Downs, his first start over the circuit after competing at Fonder Park in Delta. He ran just fine in this race. He's giving up some ground on the outside, he's running along late, and he earned a career best 65 buyer speed figure. More importantly, he showed speed at Fonder Park in his seasonal debut. So his rider can do just about whatever he wants with Magnolia speed, and he won't be compromised by the way the race is run. But they're all going to have to beat the number five. Can you hear me running? Four for four in his career. Here's his win in the Winnipeg Futurity to close out his two-year-old campaign. And he was just super impressive, sitting off of a fast pace, blowing by them in the stretch. I know his buyer speed figures seem a little bit light compared with some of the others, but these are two-year-old figures, and if he comes back a bigger, badder version of Can You Hear Me Running as a three-year-old, the rest of this field, they're going to be running for second place. It is worth noting, however, that the Winnipeg Futurity came back sort of weak. Of the four next out runners to come out of that race, none hit the board, and the best buyer of those four, only a 46. We'll see what we get off the layoff, but this horse showed immense talent as a two-year-old. Before we take a look at my top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for the Bobby Q. Obviously, Can You Hear Me Running is the horse to beat, but if you're going to try to beat him, maybe you try to beat him off the layoff. The three Keep Calm and Cruise On is also cross-centered in another race at Asinaboya Downs on Tuesday. Maybe he'll scratch out of here, but if he runs here, I think it's a very good sign, and I think he showed enough in his debut that he could build 
pulled off of that race. He's all upside, and it'll be a fair price in the Bobby Q overnight at Asinaboya Downs on Monday. Good luck.